North America wasn't always a continent of highways and fenced farmland. Once, it was a wild kingdom ruled by giants. The land itself felt alive, shaped by hooves, tusks, and claws. Vast herds moved across the plains, reshaping forests and rivers as they passed. Predators followed in silence, the air heavy with the weight of survival. It was a world that balanced strength with adaptation, a living system that lasted for millions of years. And then it stopped. The ice retreated, the climate shifted, and the giants disappeared. What they left behind was the world we know, quieter, smaller, tamer. But what if that silence never came? What if the giants survived and North America evolved alongside them? If the giants had never vanished, North America would feel wild in a way no one alive today could fully grasp. The continent would still move, literally under the weight of life. Across the Midwest, vast herds of shaggy grazers migrate with the seasons, cutting open corridors of grass where cities once sprawled. Forests stay thin and sunlit because massive herbivores tear down young trees before they can close the canopy. The air carries dust, scent, and the low rumble of hooves that never really stop. In this version of the present, mammoths fill the role of engineers, slow, deliberate, reshaping the land just by feeding. Ground sloths linger near rivers, keeping floodplains clear. And in the north, mastodons roam the forests like living bulldozers, carving space for light and new growth. Predators still define the boundaries of safety. On the plains, a relict population of American lions moves like shadows among the herds. Packs of dire wolves follow the migrations, trailing bison and young mammoths. Farther north, the short-faced bear remains king, built heavier than any modern grizzly, confident enough to claim a carcass from anything else on four legs. It's not a pristine world, it's a competitive one, but it works. Grasslands thrive, rivers run clear, and fire stays under control. The same massive creatures that once vanished now maintain the balance that forests and climate depend on. In this timeline, North America never tamed itself. It adapted alongside its giants. Surviving extinction wouldn't mean staying the same. 10,000 years of new climates, new challenges, and human presence would push every species to change. Not just in form, but in behavior, intelligence, and dominance. The Ice Age giants would still be here, but they'd look a little different. The mammoths of this world are no longer shaggy relics trudging through snow. They've adapted to warmer climates, their heavy coats replaced by shorter, thinner fur that keeps them cool on summer migrations. Their skin has darkened slightly, helping absorb heat on cold nights and reflect sunlight by day. They've also changed socially. Modern mammoths live in structured herds, matriarch-led families numbering in the hundreds that follow ancient routes across North America. Some still roam the north, between Alaska and Yukon, but others migrate through the Great Plains, shaping ecosystems as they go. Wherever they travel, the land responds. Their sheer weight presses seeds into soil. Their tusks clear brush. Their dung spreads nutrients across entire valleys. Forests can't close in because mammoths keep them open. Vast grasslands maintained by the slow, constant movement of giants. Mastodons, cousins of the mammoth, took a different path. Instead of following open plains, they embraced the woods. Modern mastodons are smaller and denser than their ancestors, built for turning forests into patchworks of sunlight and regrowth. They're the gardeners of the north, pulling down branches, pushing over trees, and reshaping what would otherwise be endless dark forest into a mosaic of meadows and groves. They've even influenced entire plant communities. Some trees evolved thicker bark to resist mastodon damage. Others spread faster because mastodons unknowingly plant their seeds through dung. What used to be temperate forest is now more like a European-style savanna, trees spaced wide apart, full of grass and wildflowers. The great ground sloths also found their niche. They didn't stay Ice Age giants forever. They evolved into something more specialized. Modern descendants are still enormous, 
standing over three meters tall when they rear up. But they're lighter and more aquatic. They live along rivers and wetlands, using their long claws to dig roots and strip aquatic vegetation. The direwolf survived by doing what it always did best, working together. Over the millennia, they became leaner, faster, and more coordinated. Today, they rule the continent's mid-tier carnivore niche. Social hunters are large enough to take down bison, but intelligent enough to coexist with humans. Their packs are tightly bonded, often numbering 10 to 15 adults. They communicate with long, drawn-out howls that carry for kilometers, not just to find one another, but to warn rivals to stay out of their range. Modern direwolves aren't just predators, they're territorial stewards, keeping herbivore populations balanced and clearing carrion that would otherwise rot and attract disease. In this timeline, grey wolves never became dominant. They remained smaller, restricted to colder, marginal areas. The direwolf is the North American standard, an apex wolf that co-evolved with giants and never lost its edge. Where the direwolf dominates cooperation, the American lion dominates power. These lions are larger than any cat alive today, but they've changed since the Ice Age. Their fur has thinned, their bodies lengthened, and they've become better sprinters, designed for open plains, not ambush in snow. They hunt strategically, often in pairs or trios, using terrain to their advantage. The short-faced bear survived by becoming smarter and less reckless. It's smaller than it used to be, around the size of a big grizzly, but it's more adaptable. Omnivorous now, it eats berries, fish, and carrion, moving with calm dominance through northern wilderness. No predator challenges it. Even mammoths move aside when it passes. It no longer relies on outcompeting others through sheer speed. Instead, it's become a patient opportunist, a top-tier scavenger that maintains balance by keeping carcasses from spreading disease. In a way, it's the Arctic's cleaner, playing the same role hyenas do in Africa. A world that kept its giants would have shaped us as much as we shaped it. Every city, road, and field would have been built around their presence, because you can't truly tame a continent when animals the size of trucks still walk across it. Modern North America would look familiar, but only from a distance. Highways would bend and rise over migration routes instead of cutting through them. Satellite networks would track herds of mammoths the same way we monitor hurricanes, sending alerts when thousands of tons of wildlife begin moving south. Cities wouldn't push nature out, they'd weave around it. Invisible boundaries of scent markers, sound barriers, and green corridors would keep animals moving safely through the world we built. Out on the plains, people would live by a rhythm that never stopped. Rural communities would brace for the migrations the way coastal towns prepare for storms. Not with fear, but with respect. When the herds pass, the lights go out early, the roads go quiet, and everyone knows to give the land back for a while. Farms would grow buffer crops along the edges, cheap vegetation meant to distract hungry grazers before they reached valuable fields. Living with giants wouldn't be a struggle, it would just be life. Predators would still be part of that balance. In California, the silhouettes of American lions might appear near farmland at dusk, watching from the grass, but rarely crossing the line. In the north, packs of dire wolves would patrol the valleys, their howls echoing through mountain air. People wouldn't see them as threats, but as signs that the ecosystem is still healthy. No one hunts them. Their presence means the world is still working as it should. Culturally, everything would carry traces of these animals. Our myths and heroes would draw strength from real encounters with wildness, not stories of something lost. Children would grow up knowing the difference between a mastodon and a mammoth, and learning that the wild doesn't begin somewhere far away. It begins just beyond the last streetlight. If the giants had endured, North America would have grown into a civilization built beside nature, not above it. A world that advanced without ever forgetting what power really looks like. The world we know feels stable, but it's really built on what's missing. When the giants vanished, they didn't just take their bones and footprints with them. They took the rhythm of a living continent. What's left behind is a quieter version of what could have been. Yet their influence never fully disappeared. 
The prairies still follow the paths their herds once carved. Forests still grow in patterns their ancestors shaped. Even the animals we live with, from bison to wolves, carry echoes of that lost balance. In another timeline, those giants still walk. They still shape rivers, part forests, and test the limits of what it means to share a planet. And maybe that vision isn't as far away as it seems. Across the world, conservationists are reintroducing wild herds, rebuilding lost ecosystems, and bringing the land back to motion. The giants might never truly return, but the world they made, the balance they built, still waits beneath the surface. All it takes is letting the land remember what it once was. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.